My name is Miguel Hernandez. I operate my family's restaurant here in Richfield, and I've been uh, doing this for about, well, as a GM, a couple of years. My parents came here, worked two, three jobs. My dad worked in a rainforest cafe. My mom worked cleaning airports, the airport uh, bathrooms, and uh, they both came together and put their, their skills to use. My dad knowing the kitchen, knowing the craft, and my mom being able to manage a large business, especially she used to manage uh, 200 employees at one point. That created a catalyst for them to open a business, uh, their first restaurant in 2005 with a partner, my uncle, and that's where I came in. And in 2005, we didn't have a fancy dishwasher, so it was three sinks uh, and me scrubbing for about three hours. And then I'd go home, and that, that would be every weekday. After uh, that first restaurant, they opened what would be become El Tehaban in 2008. I would bust tables and serve. Little did I know is that they, they were learning how to run and operate a restaurant uh, during a, re a recession. I imagine it, it's basically kind of relates to now, how COVID could, could end it. To me, it's like almost like an unrealistic memory, like I almost made it up. This place seats 150 people. We would clear out the middle of the dining room so people could dance, if you can imagine. Uh, we get pretty close to 150 people. We would be open till two in the morning, live bands, karaoke, dancing, and that all came to an end very swiftly. Even before the mandates, we did not feel morally in the right place to continue. I think it was a week or two before the mandates and uh, all the stuff shut us down that we stopped doing it. I remember the Sunday before they, they started the mandates and closing us down, I went over to a restaurant nearby where I, I knew a couple of staff and I said, hey, what are you guys gonna do? Do you think, do you mind if I, I talk to your new chef about it, your new owner? He said, they're gonna close us down. This is gonna be out of our hands within the week. Huge change, really tough to bear, probably one of the hardest things I've had to do in my career is tell 15 people, hey, you don't have income anymore. They closed down schools, and I just thought of my childhood and how my parents would work two or three jobs, and how my older sister would have to feed us. And I remember that being pretty, pretty dangerous sometimes. So I thought about these kids and like, man, they're just trying to make ramen, and you know, it's tough. So I wondered how we could help with that. Other restaurants, schools, everybody jumped on that, and that was great. All of a sudden, another huge thing happened, and that was the murder of George Floyd. That allowed me to get a different perspective and go, like many people in Minneapolis, to start these conversations and to learn and to find yourself in a position where you're either going to do nothing and be okay with it and be comfortable, or you're going to be uncomfortable and face the issues that are kind of, you know, dividing us. That led me to meet a couple of really cool people in, in the movement. Over time, uh, I got to know a gentleman, Toussaint Morrison, who just was throwing like, hey, the homeless are part of this issue, and everyone's talking about it, but we're not doing enough. And I thought the same. He messaged me and uh, we just wanted to pick up a couple of meals and then let me know about this whole distribution group. And I started messaging them and talking about what, what we could do. The GoFundMe received a lot of support right away, and some of our purveyors also supported us and uh, that led us to do 250 meals, uh, sometimes 250, sometimes 220, depending, uh, once a week. The distro group is really nice. If we didn't know them, we wouldn't be able to do this. I don't know that many people and, and interacting with the homeless respectfully is also something that needs to be taken care of and I think they do a really good job of uh, respecting them. I know that my parents came here with the desire to have a better life. Overwhelmingly, if you ask any immigrant, there's always someone who helped in one way. 
specifically what, what, what makes me think about which, how can I help, I go back to this memory of my sister, we were in uh, Mexico and my mom would give us spending money, a little bit of money, maybe like $30, $40 to go buy like little things on street markets, things that we saw and I vividly remember my sister spending all of the money on these group of homeless children who would run around trying to sell gum or just begging and she would spend all the money on, on them and just as many as she could find. And within the hour, within as soon as we hit the streets, it'd be gone. And that, I saw how happy that made her. And what she'd really done just brought all these kids happy, and happiness and hope. So that for me has stuck around through a lot of things. It's like, how can we help? How can we spread that joy? Little did I know is that my mom, my dad, they've been donating to folks this, all 12 years, as soon as they could. They just never advertised it. They never talked about it. And it was like, that's not something we do. And I was like, you should. The community should know, because then more people will join you. And, and it's infectious. I think everybody can come to a point where they're just exhausted or they're going through some stuff and they're, they just get a hot meal in front of them. You're being taken care of. Someone cares about you. Somebody um, wants you to know that. I think when we, we give away our little meals, our little taco bowls, we, people have told me like, well, there's a lot of naysayers. What are these little taco bowls gonna do? It's like, they're gonna give people hope. They're gonna be felt taken care of. They're gonna be, feel like they're wanted. And I think if that can change one person's day, it's worth it.